Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Laser, and today we're going to be having a quick review on the DAT VO7U USB microphone. This is the box that the product comes in, you can get it in black or white, and you can get it in a podcast kit that will be including this thing. It's a arm, a boom arm, which is extremely useful depending on your application, or you can get it with a disc stand. Again, black and white, but the disc stand will always be in black. Same cables in both of them, only this one comes with this extra. Now this is a little foam cover that you can put over your microphone, like so. And this helps out a lot with the plosives, your harsh S's, your P's, etc, etc. Now obviously you can also use a whole bunch of filters, but I found this one oddly effective. Now onto the product itself, it has RGB and you can control the RGB by pressing on the microphone gain dial over here. You simply press, like so. And you get to control the RGB modes. Right now you see it's blinking in what you see is orange, but the actual color is red. But this is just a phone camera, which is why it's coming across as orange. Trust me, is that red as red gets. On the bottom right here, you have a mute button. And pressing the mute button will be, well, muting the microphone. Unfortunately, this switch is not fantastic because you do need to apply a whole lot of pressure. Essentially, it would have been better to have something like a touch like the HyperX Quadcast has. But this one is also good. Again, it's a membrane switch if you ever used a membrane keyboard before. And this is your RGB. Let's get quickly through it. You just press down. You're going to have a whole bunch of modes, including uh, some comet things, changing the color constantly, like a rainbow effect, if you care for such things. But granted, it's kind of cool, right? And depending on the setup, it can work really nicely. I'll be honest with you, I found this to be the absolute best USB microphone I have ever tested and I have tested quite a lot. Recently I wanted to upgrade from my current microphone, which is a, well I guess it's best to show you. Uh, guess what it is, come on guess. Open you stupid fucking thing, okay. Which is an Audio Technica 2035, this puppy right here, and by the way this is the packaging, I put all my old stuff in it. What I like to point out that this is closed cell foam. This helps out a lot more than your regular style of foam in case of an impact. So thumbs up on this one. Love the packaging material. Now the Audio Technica 2045 is a microphone that I bought in 2014 and I have been using it ever since. It's a fantastic condenser microphone. The problem with this one is XLR and I say problem for most users because apparently XLR scares people off, although it shouldn't. Now granted, it's a goddamn big thing, isn't it? And you're gonna need yourself an audio interface such as the Scarlett uh, 2i2 or Solo or 3i3 or 4i4, whatever you prefer. Honestly, you can get away with a Solo no problem and you're gonna have yourself that XLR connection that you need. Essentially, this one, an audio interface, plays the role of a sound card for your computer. You're gonna have to know a bit more than that, but that's generally the basics. And for a microphone such as this, you will need such a audio interface. On a USB mic, that's a whole lot more, I wanna say, noob friendly, simply because, hey, you got a USB Type-C on the back right here and you're simply gonna hook that up to your computer. In the back you get not one, but two three meter cables, which are fantastic. One will be USB-C to USB-C, yes, the little one, and one will be USB-C to normal style USB. Now, I love the fact that they actually put in three meters worth of cable. That is fantastic, but you know what? It's still not enough. We need more cable, please, more cable. I would love to see something like a five meter cable because mine, unfortunately, even for three meters for my setup, it was not enough and I had to use the USB hub on my display, which is not ideal. Let's get that out of the way. You should plug this one directly into your computer. If possible, it's not ideal to go through a hub. I tested the microphone both through the hub and through the computer to see if there's any difference and there was no noticeable difference to my ears. Not for the microphone and not for the built-in sound card because this one has a built-in sound card. I hooked up my studio monitors. These are the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X. Essentially, you're gonna monitor your audio, but you should run all of the audio through this puppy right here so you can see exactly how your voice sounds with the gaming in the background, with the music, with the everything, depending on what exactly it is that you're streaming. And here comes the bad part. Well, one of the bad parts. The headphone amplifier on this one is simply put absolute garbage. As soon as you go over 50% gain, you're going to be hearing yourself all sorts of hisses and background noises, especially if you're going to be using revealing headphones such as these. Now, I thought maybe this is isolated just to me. I tested it on my wife's computer as well, and essentially the result has been identical. 
a quick look online and I found many other users complaining about the exact same issue. So dear deity, this is Prio 1. Yeah, you gotta fix this. In the next iteration, perhaps, for this microphone, which is amazing, let me make that very clear, this needs to go. It either needs to go completely or you put in a decent headphone amp. And the next part, which is absolutely terrible, you're kind of looking at it now, this thing. Unfortunately, this is a copy of the Rode PSA-1 boom arm. And the Rode PSA-1 is a budget-conscious microphone boom arm that gets the job done. This one, however, is a bit more cheaper than that, a bit more flimsy. It's very vibrate -y. There is no shock mount, unfortunately, for this one. Ideally, you would want something like this. Yeah. Inevitably, you will touch your microphone, either with your hand, your face, your... Just bump into it, and a shock mount is something that you should include in the box instead of this goddamn thing. Now, if you take a look over here, I think I'm going to have to put pictures. As soon as I move the boom arm uh, with a large cracking noise, the paint essentially started coming off. Yeah, it cracked all over the place. And if you look closely, can you see the... Look at that. Can you spot that? Brand new product, and that is rust. Let me make one thing clear. This is the weak point of the product. This boom arm is absolutely garbage and you should not buy this bundle. Buy the other bundle that includes a desk stand. It couldn't possibly be worse than this. On the plus side, it is color coded, which is why I bought it. It looks kind of cool like this, right? That was the general idea. But unfortunately, the quality on this one is lacking. Thanks for the cable ties, though. That is nice. One last thing that I would like to point out. I understand that some people have a problem with the cleaning their microphones. I have been using the same mic since 2014 and I never dirtied my mic to a great degree, but this one can be cleaned like this. This is a super cardio pickup pattern, yeah? That means you're gonna have to talk directly from here and you can take this off and just simply clean it if you have uh, splurge issues. Yes, let's call it like that. How did I arrive at the V07U? And the way I arrived at it is by my community. Essentially, I wanted to do an upgrade. I thought, hey, I haven't changed my mic in forever. Maybe there is something better out there. So what I did is ask my community. I'm going to be linking you a fantastic, absolutely fantastic comparison vid with multiple microphones. And I said, hey, which one do you guys like the most? And this one came tied with the fabled, by this point, HyperX Quadcast S. And I tried that one first because... <laughs> To be honest, it was cheaper. And I liked the idea of it being cheaper and not having to spend so much. So here you go, here's some rainbow RGB, if you like, something like that. That one is also a great option to have, but that one is a bit more metallic, a bit more edgy in its sound, and it was significantly more noisy than the Deity. So even though it is more expensive, I would definitely recommend this one for the sound quality. However, what I liked on the HyperX is the fact that you could just tap the nose and it would go mute. Having an actual physical button to press will move the boom arm or whatever you have it placed, which is a problem when you don't include a shock mount and your boom arm is not all that fantastic. I also appreciate braided cables. The HyperX had a braided cable. This has standard cables. And outside of that, I gotta be honest, the monitoring on the HyperX was simply better in the sense that at least over 50% gain, it didn't start to hiss from all sides. Pepper Pods podcast sucked on strawberry suckers. Pepper Pods podcast sucked on strawberry suckers. And yes, this is the plosive test. Now I'm going to be using this thing. You see where the microphone is? Yes, this it's, it's here. It's right here. So this is a pretty ideal position for it. Pepper Pods podcast sucked on strawberry suckers. Pepper Pods podcast sucked on strawberry suckers. Now, one more time. This is where the microphone is. I'm going to be turning off the blur for a second. Yes, it's quite the mess in my room. My little baby had her way with it. But now we're going to be switching over to the deity side because I want to show you a little bit of something. Here's something that you need to do, deity. I am trying my hardest to remember the name of your microphone. You need a catchy name like Razer does things. You know how Razer does things. Siren, this, Death Adder, Killer, all of that crap. It's not fantastic, obviously, but it makes it easier to remember the product name. Hey, uh, Lazar, what microphone are you using? Oh, it's a uh, deity v VO7U. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Get what I'm saying? Now, this is the microphone. You can get it right now in two bundles, like I mentioned before. 169 and at 169, you're going to be getting the basic packs. You're still getting the two cables. You are still getting this little desk stand in black, as you can see right here. But you're not getting the foam filter for the P's and the S's, the plosives, essentially. Ooh, I forgot to talk about this feature. Fantastic. So, the automatic hardware audio limiter. Are you not familiarized 
with the filters that you can add in OBS or Streamlabs or depending on what software you're using to record and or stream. Now, normally streamers use these filters to prevent audio clipping. That is when the microphone goes to absolute maximum and it blows out your ears. You can do that by adding filters with any microphone in Streamlabs or XSplit and again, depending on what you're using. But this one, this one has it built in an analog automatic hardware audio limiter that is huge that is absolutely fantastic and it automatically engages when you go over 50 percent gain on the little dial over here now i tested it and it's absolutely fantastic i still feel that the better job is done by the software limiters which you have a bit more control over it really depends because you see these limiters should be set after you have your microphone in the ideal position and only after that you're gonna start with filters you should start with noise suppression and then add yourself an expander a compressor there's a whole lot to go into we're not gonna do that today however the hardware limiter does a decent job not a fantastic job i prefer to go under 50 percent gain so it doesn't automatically trigger because it's either the fault of the headphone amplifier built into this one but i believe it changes the sound of the audio recording slightly and if you got a decent pair of audio monitor headphones you should be able to tell as well it is a noticeable sound difference between it being engaged and it being not engaged does that make any sorts of sense so test it see how you like it more i'm still struggling on stream i'm asking all the time audience hey is it better like this or is it better like this and they like we can't hear any difference and i can and it's frustrating so bear in mind it's not gonna be a huge difference uh, in any case a couple of more pit peeves dear deity why are you making me press the gain button of all things the gain button to change the rgb obviously when you have everything set up to sound exactly the way you want it and you're going to be spending hours and hours of testing setting testing setting to get to that optimal place and then you just want to change the color of the damn thing you might actually change the level of the gain which is not ideal and considering that this control is not notched to know exactly where you are or a digital input well let's just say if you have any form of ocd that's going to bother you and it's going to bother you greatly also when you turn everything off the rgb turns off and when you turn the computer on the RGB does not turn on with it. You got to press the button again, which again can lead to you changing the gain. I don't know how many of you will be bothered by this, but it has been annoying to say the least. So for a future revision, I get it. You don't want to make a million buttons, but please no RGB on the bloody gain button. Let the gain button be the gain button. And that's it. You can put it somewhere else, a little button, or you know what? You can remove RGB entirely. I'm not entirely sure how much of a selling point that is, but I will admit it does look cool. Yes, this is the pack that I bought and I want you to bear in mind this is my own review. Nobody sent this to me for review. Nobody's paying me. Nobody contact me. I simply arrived at this microphone after doing what you're doing. A whole lot of research. And it's annoying, isn't it? Because it's totally subjective and there will be points when you simply don't know. Okay, what the hell sounds even better? My recommendation to you, get yourself a pair of good studio monitors so you can hear the actual difference. Either speakers or a pair of headphones. Audio-Technica ATH-M50X. For a decent price try to get them used it's also fine so that's pretty much it my friends again i believe this one to be the absolute best usb microphone or at least from the ones that i tested i'm also going to be pointing out that a close second or somewhat a second place is going to go to the hyper x quadcast s that one also had good audio quality and a very good performance out of the box my problem with that one is a bit more tinny it's a bit more metallic sharp what i like to call edgy sound that and it's a fair bit noisier but i appreciated the accessories a bit more in the sense that it did come with a braided cable and that's a that's a pet peeve of mine i really like braided cables not only that you also have a bit more flexibility on that one in the sense that it has multiple pickup patterns that you can select from when it comes to recording your videos or streams or something of the sort you should definitely go for a cardioid or super cardioid pickup pattern and that one did a much, much weaker job at actually canceling out background noise. And by that, I mean not picking up everything in the room. Like my wife walking by and telling my baby that, hey, it's time for bath. Or the keyboard noises. My keyboard, even though this is, this is not a mechanical keyboard, this is an optical switch keyboard, which is supposed to be the latest and greatest. Somehow, this specific keyboard makes a whole lot of noise when it comes to the um, plastic on plastic action. And the plastic on plastic action was picked up pretty loudly, not only by the HyperX Quadcast S, but also my 2035. This one doesn't do that. And I'm really happy about that. It has a lot to do with the pickup pattern. This one you tuck from the front and the other ones you're supposed to tuck from the side. And when you have it like this, it's going to be easier for it to pick up the noise of the keyboard. So again, 
your mileage will vary it will depend on your setup your situation i like to use my microphones on a boom arm simply because i believe this is to be the optimal place and i can cancel them appearing with a software and it looks almost decent depending on your position and all whatnot so yes this is why i prefer the deity i believe this one from the usb mics i tested so far and probably not gonna test anymore because i'm gonna remain at this one is the best one another option a more budget conscious option is gonna be the hyper x quadcast s if you can't afford that one either go for the hyper x solo just simply add the right filters in the right order and you're gonna get a decent sound out of that one as well and i do believe that's pretty much it this has been a very quick review if i forgot something you have my apologies let me know in the comment section down below i will do my best to get to them these are the stats these are the specifications of the actual microphone i do not find these to be relevant whatsoever simply because it's all about the sound therefore it's all about subjective i thought i wouldn't bore you with stuff like this as always my name is Malazar. thank you guys so much for watching like favorite share and subscribe only if you enjoy the content if you got any feedback for me let me know in the comment section down below i will catch you guys in the next one bye